Recently, we discovered a gulf of knowledge. One of our latest videos talked about protocol droids. Specifically, it was about TC-14 and the 3PO series in general. This naturally involved the mention of C-3PO, but only as an example of his model. A lot of the comments on this video were identical. They expressed the same thought using nearly the same phrasing. You have forgotten something about C-3PO. He was created by a slave from a box of scraps. He's a custom droid with no relation to the Cybot Galactica 3PO series. This was astonishing, and it's worth looking into. I'm a fucking Star- why am I in a Star Wars video? Oh god. Oh fuck. Okay, I'll fucking- fucking read these comments, whatever. C-3PO was built by a four-year-old on a desert planet and is not a factory droid. This is a nothing burger. It doesn't say he's not a 3PO, just that Anakin used various parts when repairing 3PO. Okay, so where does the fact that Anakin built C-3PO from scratch come into it? I'm sure hundreds of other people have already said this, but what about the fact that C-3PO is built out of scrap parts that have been cobbled together by a nine-year-old? You seem to forget that C-3PO was rebuilt by a young Anakin Skywalker, who knows where the scavenged parts came from, or who knows knows where the scavenged parts came from, so no mention of the fact that C-3PO was built by a nine-year-old mostly out of scraps from a junkyard? As one of those books states that C-3PO has been active for 112 years before his adventures with the Rebel Alliance, I'm not sure any of the details in the books can be believed. Lucas having C-3PO be built by a young Anakin Skywalker was dumb. He was built by a gifted child in a closet. Anakin built C-3PO from spare parts. C-3PO got assembled by Anakin from scrap. 3PO is basically a unique piece not a factory model. Have you forgotten that Anakin Skywalker built C-3PO from scrap? Didn't Anakin make C-3PO from a box? Made from scratch by a 12-year-old boy? Surely this is all academic, because Anakin made C-3PO. You have to remember, he is basically a custom robot. And there's funny emojis there, that one's funny. Created by Anakin from junk. As he wasn't factory built, C-3PO was hand built by Anakin Skywalker. You're aware that C-3PO was a name, right? C-3PO was made by a child. Anakin built C-3PO. Anakin built him in his garage using spare parts. He was built by an autistic kid. <laughs> Is Anakin autistic? Is that <laughs> true? You have to remember C-3PO was custom made. A backwater kit droid build by a slave child. <laughs> He's a custom build made by Anakin. Easily explained by the fact that Anakin built him from parts. Annie built C-3PO from parts. Kit bashed and custom. Built by young Anakin as a hobby. I find it really funny that so many of these people are misspelling like the main character's name. I thought the C in C-3PO stood for costum. It's spelled costum. Those are good comments. He was made by Anakin from scrap found in the junk. 3PO is a custom job. Before that, there's one quick misconception to clear up. How do you spell C-3PO? You would think that has an obvious answer. C-3PO. The two most common variations I see are C-3P0 and a misplaced hyphen. First of all, the O in 3PO is a letter, not a numeral. When that zero does appear, the book is often inconsistent. Later on, the name will be written correctly. Second, the hyphen is the second character in the name. That is to say, the dash goes between the C and the 3. Some people leave this out entirely, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Others put a hyphen right in the middle. C3PO. This one is definitely incorrect. It follows the pattern of R2D2. It would be pronounced differently too. Let's quickly run through the origins of C-3PO. Hello. I don't believe we have been introduced. A pleasure to meet you. I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. Protocol droids have been around for a while. Trying to find the oldest model would be fruitless. I would guess they've been around as long as the Republic itself. 25 millennia of diplomacy and translation droids. The earliest models would be primitive, dedicated to a single species. Moving swiftly onwards, the next date is around 100 BBY. Around this time, a leading droid manufacturer created a new model. Cybot Galactica is one of the two largest companies in the droid industry. They were about to replace an older form of protocol droid. In most respects, the newly designed 3PO would be similar to its ancestors. Its general size and shape will have been decided thousands of years earlier. Through iteration and evolution, droid designs are gradually optimized. What sets the 3PO apart are the internal components. 
For its translation hardware, 3PO's use a standard Tranlang 3 module. These are widely available to droid manufacturers. The previous Tranlang 2, as used on the J9 worker drone, supported 1 million languages. We can assume all previous protocol droids used the TL2. By using the cutting-edge Tranlang 3, the 3PO was the definitive protocol droid. However, the Tranlang 3 is nothing more than a database. It stores the 6 million languages needed for a protocol droid. Putting that knowledge to use requires a droid brain. Instead of developing their own, Cybot Galactica commissioned one from a specialist company. SynthTech designed the AA1 Verbobrain to be the ultimate for a protocol droid. Its most important task is to apply the knowledge from the 3PO's memory banks, to identify a known language and culture and respond appropriately. When encountering an unfamiliar dialect, the AA1 must work out its own translation. In other applications, the Verbobrain would be adequate but a waste of potential. As we have seen, a 3PO can make probability calculations. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1! Never tell me the odds! That's notable because it's completely irrelevant to the primary function. Except in cases like the Gavin, where quadratic equations are considered a greeting. For most droids, serving as a calculator is fairly straightforward. 956 to the uh, power of 77. 45,969. Come on, Brayman, come on! Droid intelligence has quite a spectrum, from load lifter to doctor. The 3PO is at the high end of that spectrum. R2 has been known to make mistakes from time to time. <laughs> its superior verbo brain is equipped for genuine people personalities. In the case of the 3PO, this produces quite a neurotic, paranoid android. I've been talking to the ship's computer. And it hates me. Oh no! Moving swiftly onwards through the timeline, we arrive in the Age of the Empire. Cybot Galactica attempted to create a niche variation of the protocol droid. The target demographic was specifically the planet Lur. Due to actions taken by Emperor Palpatine, the PD droid was a failure. Note that after about 90 years of production, the 3PO was still their flagship model. The PD was not intended as a next-generation protocol droid. Still, the PD line was fairly influential. Industrial Automaton, the main competitor, had kept an eye on the PD. Their own protocol droid, the LOM series, was designed afterwards. Despite the age, a cutting-edge protocol droid still meant a copy of the 3PO. Any modern translator would be expected to feature a Tranlang 3. That doesn't count as copying, it's just using the appropriate tool for the job. However, the LOM used many parts that were identical to those in the 3PO. That included a deal with SynthTech in order to access the AA1 Verbobrain. Given nearly a century of experience, the new droid had an improved personality. The LOM series are more calm and relaxed than a 3PO. All of this is universal knowledge. It was known before the prequels, and it remains true after them. Even in the reboot universe, it will only be overwritten by accident. These are the stable facts we can rely on, regardless of personal opinion. With the history of the 3PO series nailed down, we can continue. Wake up! By far the most famous protocol droid is C-3PO. This is true in our galaxy, and after his time with Luke, also in the Star Wars one. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm not going that way. When covering 3PO's history, Let's start with episode 1. Isn't he great? He's not finished yet. In the movie, little Annie claims to be building a droid. I'm building a droid. You want to see? Anakin also says that he built a pod racer. The movie will go on to show us both machines are in working order. It's working! It's working! Skywalker is a great pilot, like his son will be. In his daily life, though, the most useful skill is his ability to fix machines. He has a natural aptitude greater than any other character in the galaxy. As skilled as Han and Chewie are with repairing the Falcon, except for any machine. This has led to a perception that Anakin is the boy genius character type. I can see there's no fooling you, Anakin. Since he had a rough childhood, he invented a robot friend. When he invented a flying car, it was the fastest ever built. I built a racer. It's the fastest ever. This seems to be quite a widespread understanding of the character. 
In hindsight, I can see how that would have happened, especially for non-fans. I asked one which confirmed my suspicions. A month ago, I had assumed everyone knew 3PO came from a factory. Oh my! Put simply, Anakin cannot create things. Wouldn't have lasted long anyways if I wasn't so good at building things. He does not mine and smelt his own metal. He isn't a blacksmith. He doesn't turn copper and plastic into wire. There is no inventing involved at all. At most, a lack of parts forces him to improvise an alternative. I can help. I can fix anything. Young Skywalker builds droids in the same way I build computers. That is to say, by connecting factory-made parts to a chassis. Components that are designed to work together to make this kind of machine. This doesn't count as inventing, no matter what the journalists might say. Now, let's take a look at C-3PO's history. In 1999, where did the droid come from? The Visual Dictionary mentions the structural elements of a droid. It had been stripped for parts, and Anakin is restoring it. This clearly tells us that Anakin found a Cybot Galactica protocol droid. Found him in a junk pile. <laughs> oh, what a mess. Created in a factory, then discarded and ransacked. You could argue that C-3PO's chassis was not from a protocol droid. <laughs> that would be quite ridiculous, so we'll drop that idea. Oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Anakin found a 3PO, and is repairing it to be a 3PO. What else can we learn from this book? We know that when Anakin found him, C-3PO did not have coverings. Droid plating is valuable, and was likely the first part that had been looted. We can see this in episode 4. 3PO has a mismatched leg color. If the plating was cheap, it would have been easy to get a matching set. The lack of plating in Episode 1 clearly shows the droid is unfinished. Unlike in Cloud City, there are no limbs missing. He is naked, not dismembered. Where am I? I must have taken a bad step. We are told that C-3PO's structural framework is over 80 years old. This is perfectly calculated to tie into established canon. The Phantom Menace takes place in the year 32 BBY. Adding another 80 years to that gives 112 BBY as a date of birth. This is absolutely correct. C-3PO's age was always given as over 112. That will be when he walked off the Cybot Galactica production line. Uh -oh. Oh. Uh, I'm so confused. The other detail we know is that 3PO's eyes were stolen. Anakin. By Anakin, that is, not by scavengers. Not my eyes, not when he got the droid back home, it still had both eye sockets filled. This tells us C-3PO hadn't been picked clean of all components. There was definitely a skeleton left, as well as some of the imaging circuits. From there, we can infer any number of other parts were also left behind. 3PO's original eyes had been damaged over the 80 years since leaving the factory. Anakin sneakily swaps them for the photoreceptors on one of Watto's droids. Where is everybody? Whoops. Hello. Finally, the 1999 book mentions C-3PO having programming and memory banks. As we know from the photoreceptors, some parts were left in the droid's frame. Anakin doesn't have the experience to program a protocol droid. He can't speak many languages. He doesn't know a million cultures. This tells us C-3PO's memory banks have to be original. This also explains how he can remember his first job being binary load lifters. Sir, my first job was programming binary load lifters, very similar to your evaporators in most respects. His oldest memories have been preserved for 112 years. Any memory wipes have been shallow, only rolling back a few decades. It's even implied 3PO remembers his years rusting in a scrap heap. The TPM novelization talks about the mental effects of long deactivation. Sir, if you'll not be needing me, I'll close down for a while. Sure, go ahead. There is a detail in the 2006 New Essential Guide to Droids. It says that C-3PO has a combination of three droid brains. In the interest of giving Theseus his ship back, one must be the original. Without his plating, C-3PO's verbo brain had gone rusty over its years of exposure. Anakin salvaged components from two other AA-1 droid brains, both with heat damage one having been fried in a warehouse fire, the other partially melted. 
Think of this like replacing the printed circuit board on a hard drive. He has to complete two more circuits. <laughs> yeah. You need the correct donor model, but its data storage remains intact. The idea is similar to the ship's computer aboard the Falcon. This one isn't a single computer repaired using spare parts from two others. Rather, it's a small Beowulf cluster made of three very different droid brains. With the prequel revelations handled, we can move back to the rest of history. As it happens, this is fully consistent with the idea of Anakin repairing C-3PO. What a stroke of luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Let's look one year earlier, at the 1998 Visual Dictionary. The entry on 3PO mentions an interesting detail, how many jobs he had. Luke Skywalker is his 43rd master. That seems entirely as expected for a protocol droid as old as C-3PO. We could assume the last few are Anakin, Shmi, Captain Antilles, and Luke. Our last master was Captain Antilles. That leaves another 40 masters for the 80 years before Anakin rebuilt him. If my calculations are correct, that works out to be an average of two years for each owner. Going back to even earlier lore, we knew his age in 1994. This was mentioned in the Essential Guide to Characters. It confirms C-3PO was first activated 112 years ago. As expected, it also mentions that 3PO is a Cybot Galactica 3PO. We have less evidence regarding the factory where he was built. There is one mention of the planet Affa in 2008, in a TCW book. If we trace this back to its origin, this seems to be a comic book from 1979. The only question is why 3PO says he was activated centuries ago. I don't have any problem with that. 1.12 centuries is still centuries. We now know all we need to about C-3PO, his origin, and how he was reactivated. How might I serve you? He's perfect. Certain books mention that Anakin gave C-3PO his name. While it is possible to rename a ship or a droid, there is no need for this. The rationale is normally given as the third member of the Skywalker family. That doesn't make sense in context. The 3 is just part of the 3PO model number. However, C happens to be the third letter of the alphabet. I should also mention that, yes, Star Wars does include the English alphabet. That's how we can have A, B, X and Y wings. The letters of Orobesh don't look like those ships, so our symbols are included. The same applies to the Greek alphabet. The Imperial Shuttle is named Lambda for its shape. Stop fucking with the microwave! Now that 3PO has been accounted for, one thing remains. This oil bath is going to feel so good! So far, I've explained one example in detail. If my logic is sound, this should be a general principle that applies everywhere. Instead of just talking about droids, let's use the pod racer as a case study. Anakin created the fastest pod racer ever built. The fastest ever built. Where the cockpit came from is never specified. A large swoop bike, a small speeder, or a pod whose engines were destroyed. What we do know is the source of the engines. At some point, Watto owned a pair of Radon Olza 620C turbine engines. These were manufactured by a company named Radon Olza, not by Anakin. Exactly. Before being modified, their model number is 620C. The backstory is that Watto considered them too burned out to be worth keeping track of, except in the reboot continuity where a couple of words went missing. Now it was too burned out to be worth keeping. This changes the implication of how Anakin got hold of them. Originally, this meant Annie made off with them in the dead of night. Then all what you do, put the lightsaber away, Annie, please! If Watto ever noticed, he didn't care either way. No pod is worth two slaves, not by a long shot. In the Disneyverse, Watto wanted to be rid of the engines and... gave them to Annie? Yet the movie still says Watto doesn't know the pod was built. Watto doesn't know I've built it. You could make him think it was yours. Anakin's engines are heavily modified from the factory spec 620C. The changes we cannot see are to its fuel system. We're informed this injects more fuel, burns every atom of it, and yields more thrust. We don't know how the original 620C engines worked. Were they ordinary turbojets? If so, Anakin could have converted these to an electric compressor. Taking out the power turbine should give some extra thrust, and make the engine all afterburner. However, it's more likely pod engines are always built this way. See our pod racer episode for details on turbine engines. Anakin will have only overhauled the fuel distribution. 
The other main modification is the yellow control surfaces at the front. They are not present on the original Radon Ulza 620C. Anakin found the hydraulics in some military surplus that Watto had purchased. For some reason, Disney removed all mention of Dredden the Hutt, the arms dealer who had sold the parts. The metal plates have not been significantly modified, as far as we know. They are attached externally, and don't really tie into the turbines. If there had been a fuselage or wing, the air brakes would have been attached there. Since pod racers don't have those, the cockpit and engines are the only options. In conclusion, the engines were made in a factory as Radon Ulza 620C. Anakin repaired and overhauled them, and they are still Radon Ulza 620Cs. The same applies to other modified equipment. By far the most famous light freighter was a YT-1300. Its markings match those of a ship that blasted its way out of Moss Eisley. It was heavily modified, and the Millennium Falcon is still a YT-1300. The Rebel Medical Frigate is a modified Nebulon B. Han Solo carries a modified DL-44 blaster pistol. You see where I'm going with this. I've seen everything. You know, I've seen it all. C-3PO was manufactured as a Cywat Galactica 3PO unit. He was heavily damaged, then repaired in a way that would void his warranty. Even if you believe a TC series existed, C-3PO is still a 3PO. He started as a 3PO and has always remained a 3PO. I'm sorry I wasn't able to finish you, 3PO. Give you coverings and all. I'm gonna miss working on you. You've been a great pal. We'd like to thank Purple Colonel for contributing guest narration in the intro. As one of our early fans and a writer of comments, he perfectly represents our audience. If you have an interest in Half-Life, you may want to check out his channel. The Bread Circus highly recommends his Half-Life's on a Rail Isn't Bad video. It is so universally disliked that the fan-made remake of the game, Black Mesa, cut just about everything from the original and replaced it with new areas. However, I find that not only is this reputation undeserved, but On a Rail might be one of the most interesting and important chapters in the entire game. There are two ways to support us. Become a patron at patreon.com slash thebreadcircus, or subscribe, like, and comment. Only the former option guarantees that your name lives on in history. The other is embarrassing youtube -y stuff. You think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? I'm a Toydarian! My tricks gonna work on me! Only money! No money, no parts, no deal! <laughs>